It's going pretty good so far. We got maybe 10% of the house done. Chels is going around and hitting all the 16 inch, well, 14 and a half inch bays. <laughs> to 15 to 15 and a half, to hey, 14 and quiet. a quarter. They don't know, they think our <laughs> framing is perfect. Uh. <laughs> I'm doing all the annoying cuts. I actually took a hand insulation blade. I modified it, drilled the hole. It fits perfectly on my Sawzall. So that's what I'm using to cut <clears throat> and it's working perfect. So we just got to keep cranking along. We'll do some spray film in a few spots. We'll get insulation uh, inspection, hopefully in a couple days. Drywall is being delivered. We have to get the insulation inspected? Oh yeah. Insulation inspected? Yep. Drywall is delivered in three days. And I have to work every one of those days. So you have a lot of insulating to do. Let's get to it. One down, 35 to go. Good morning, guys. Today, got some big things. Sorry, it's 5... 5.15 in the morning. A little tired, but want to get a lot done before the drywall gets delivered today. Let me get some coffee. I'm a little tired. Fun fact, if you didn't know, coffee does not give you any energy. It blocks the chemicals in your brain that tell you that you are tired, so... But we got enough sleep last night to function. We'll uh, sleep this weekend. So we got this whole place insulated. It was a lot of work. It wasn't too itchy. Um, it took us basically a day and a half. We got R23 in every wall. And with how we built our headers, you can check this video out right here when we framed the house. But we built them so that we could get insulation in them. So our headers are fully insulated. 
That way, we're not having any heat loss through the tops of our windows. We spray foamed around all of our windows. We're gonna have drywall returns, and then we will caulk where the drywall meets the window, so that'll be completely airtight. And then we're going to do probably a poplar sill on the bottom, just kind of for durability. You set stuff, it's not gonna dent the drywall. The fireplace is all stone, so that is not getting any drywall. We'll still, we still have some more work with the custom built-ins that kind of got put on the back burner because we had so many other things to do. So super happy with this product. This is from John's Man, John's Manville, Manville John, I can't remember, a Menards brand of rock wool basically. I don't know how they do it, but they take rock, they heat it up to a molten point and they spin it like cotton candy almost. And that is what this insulation is. So it's spun rock not fiberglass. So I don't have a lighter out here, otherwise I'd show you. I tried it in my shop. You cannot light this stuff on fire. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, you could heat it long enough to melt it, but if the house catches fire, the walls, the, the walls might still go up with the wood, but the insulation is not going to contribute to the house fire at all. So that's good. It's incredibly dense because there's so many layers of rock. This stuff was pretty heavy. Three to 4,000 pounds of insulation in the walls. And that's because it's rock. It's very, very dense. Um, you probably can't tell in this video, but it is so much quieter in here. When I was in college, I actually built a recording studio in my parents' house, and this is what I used to soundproof that room. So I did have a little bit of experience in knowing how good this stuff was. We did the price comparison, and it was only marginally more expensive than the fiberglass. And I was like, hey, I've used this before. It doesn't really itch. It's super durable and it will result in a super quiet house. We are probably about two miles from an expressway and one mile from a train. And I don't really mind either of those, but having the option of having every window and door shut and muting those down is nice. A lot of people probably in the comments are gonna say, why didn't you spray foam? Cost, that's the only reason. Um, but also a little bit of why, because, hear me out, here we go. We got the zip system on the outside, which is an air barrier and acts as a vapor barrier. And in Southern Michigan, we're in climate zone four. So most of the year you have your heat on compared to your AC. So that means it's warmer inside your house than it is outside. Heat travels through, I think, four or five different methods. And one of them is through vapor. You're cooking, you have a bath, a shower, even flushing the toilet or washing your hands adds humidity to the air. And because it's hotter in here, heat moves from hot to cold, it goes through your wall towards the outside. In Texas, in Florida, you have the exact opposite. The heat is trying to get into your building. So putting a layer of spray foam on the outside of the building, this heat and vapor is trying to get through and it's going to hit that spray foam, which we would have gone with closed cell, which is waterproof. So that would have stopped the vapor in my brain. And it could have, in theory, over the years or decades, could have caused moisture to get stopped at that layer and not be able to exit the building. And then you'd still have moisture in your walls. So we spent so much money on the zip system because it's so airtight, but it still does allow vapor to pass outward through it. It's kind of crazy technology. So we got a quote for the spray foam and it was an inch and a half of spray foam. And then they filled the rest of the two by six wall with fiberglass. That resulted in an R23 and it would have been a tight house, but it already is a tight house. We have the zip system, we taped every single seam, we spray foam the seam on the inside, we put Prosico Argard on the entire bottom sill, connecting the wood to the concrete, we caulked the inside of every single sill, putting the sill plate down to the top of the poured wall, we took zip liquid flash and covered every single nail hole on the entire house on the outside, and we went overboard with flashing our windows. In theory, and don't get at me in the comments, pretty much airtight. So there really should not be anywhere for air to get in. So spending a lot of money on spray foam didn't really make sense because we've already achieved that airtightness where spray foam really helps you. So we already decided spray foam is kind of a waste. On top of that, with this mineral wool, we were able to get again an R23, which is the same exact as the flash and bat with the spray foam and the fiberglass. So we have the same R value, we have better sound properties because it doesn't echo as bad as spray foam. And it was a very easy product that we could do ourselves. 
I'd gone back and forth. Some guys buy a spray foam rig and then do that as a separate business to kind of pay it off. Brand new spray rig, you're looking at forty to fifty thousand dollars. I do not have time to start another business yet, so that just didn't make sense either. We went with the mineral wool. I think we're going to be very, very happy. Chelsea was able to do probably half of this herself. All the full bays, she just put two pieces. I'd cut a one foot piece, push it in. We flew around this house. Drywall is getting delivered in a couple hours. We're subbing out the drywall. They're going to put drywall on the ceiling first, then all of the walls. And then Chelsea and I will get up in the attic with an insulation blower and we're going to blow cellulose in the entire ceiling. So that's how the ceiling is going to get insulated. And we can kind of add as much as we want to get above code. Our channel is experiencing tremendous growth right now. I don't really know what happened. We've had a few shorts that are doing really well and we're growing like... 100 150 subscribers every single day so thank you guys if you're a new subscriber it really means a lot to us we have some big things coming um and by that i don't just mean this house this house is going to start to take shape the drywall we're going to spray the whole house that's going to be a whole video painting this house we got to do all of the flooring tile bathroom floor two full tile showers kitchen backsplash a ton of tile work actually in this house um, then we got to side this thing. We got to trim. We got to hang cabinets. We have a lot to go. And once we get drywall up, that's going to be another refresher and kind of like give us some inspiration because this house has seemed stuck at this stage for so long. It's kind of discouraging coming out here because it's like, all right, got to do this little thing, but it doesn't even make a difference and you can't notice it at the end of the day. The insulation was nice because it's kind of filling out the rooms. Drywall completely changes it. And then you can actually visualize each room. Maybe we'll do a house tour to kind of go over the layout if you guys would want that. Somebody comment below. If I get a couple people that say it, I'll make the time to make the video. I got to get a few things ready before drywall. I'm a little concerned because I have like 10 estimates today. Everybody called yesterday wanting concrete. So I'm going to be gone the whole day. I'm a little nervous about them delivering the drywall through these double doors. These were very expensive. It's a massive, it's like an eight inch beautiful sill plate that I'm really worried they're gonna just dolly right over. So I think I'm gonna build like a little protective covering of some sort for them to get it in these doors. And I gotta get this stuff cleared out of the way. I swept last night, the place is looking clean. I'm just rambling now, sorry. I'm so excited about drywall. I'm gonna get cleaning. We'll see you guys in the next video.